What's going on, guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital, and we're here with Jamil Sater, CEO of Monumental Minerals. Now, Monumental Minerals is a mineral exploration company focused on the acquisition, exploration, and development of mineral resource properties in the critical and electric metal sector. The company trades on TSX Venture under ticker symbol MNRL and on the OTC under ticker symbol MNMRF. Now, Monumental Minerals holds two projects under one roof that aim to contribute significantly to the development of electric vehicles and high strength magnets, a lithium brine project located in Chile and a heavy rare earth project located in Mexico. So it's great to have you here, Jamil. How are you doing today? I'm, uh, I'm doing really well, Aaron. Uh, thanks for having me on the call today. Yeah, I'm excited to be talking today about Monumental Minerals, which has major interest in two very hot markets, lithium and rare earths. So can you provide a rough background on the assets and the company? Yes. So there's two projects, as you've said, there's the heavy rare earth in Mexico, um, and this is located in, in the state of Coahuila uh, in, in uh, northeastern Mexico. It's approximately about 40 kilometers from the Texas border. If you know Texas at all, it's close to, um, to Big Bend uh, National Park. Um, this project, as you've said, is heavy rare earths. Uh, there are light rare earths as well, um, but uh, the, the, uh, the dominant interest in this project are the heavies. Um, it, uh, it's, it's road accessible, uh, there's power nearby, and, um, and we feel it's, a, it's in a really, really great location for, um, for this type of an asset. In terms of lithium, this is, uh, it's called Laguna Blanca, and it is in the lithium triangle in Chile. And so it's in the high Atacama Desert, the project is around 4,500 meters in, in altitude, so it's, it's, quite, uh, it's quite high up. Um, and it's kind of near that triple point between Bolivia, Argentina, and Chile. Um, and this, this project is a lithium brine project, but also there are, uh, it's perspective for lithium in sediments, as well as cesium in sediments. Now, cesium is an interesting one. Uh, you normally see cesium in, in smaller concentrations in these type of projects, in, in, in brine or solar type projects, but not to the concentration we've seen so far. So cesium is, is a really interesting one for us. Um, it's kind of like the cherry on top of the sundae, if you, if you want to put it that way. Um, and so, as you said, we are, uh, we are a company focused on uh, critical metals and that energy transformation. We think that they're, um, you know, the automotive industry uh, wants to move away from the internal combustion engine, as does the rest of the, the world. And, and uh, we all want to be a little bit more um, um, friendly, uh, environmentally friendly and greener. And I think that these projects can potentially provide some of the raw materials that are required for that energy transformation. Yeah, it sounds like you have two really unique projects. Now, I understand both assets are in highly prospective terrains. Can you elaborate on this? Like what makes these assets so attractive? Absolutely. So I'll start with Laguna Blanca, uh, the, the one in the, the, the lithium project. Uh, so as I said, it's in the lithium triangle. Um, and to just give you a, a very quick overview of, of the project itself in terms of, of the technical or the geology, basically what happens is groundwater flows into a restricted basin. Uh, and that's kind of the same thing as, if I can give another example, the Great Salt Lake. So you get water that's flowing in to a basin, but it has nowhere to go. So it never actually flows away into a river, which eventually flows into the ocean. Um, and during, during this uh, process, the waters dissolve some of the rock, the groundwater dissolves some of that rock, and some of those elements, like lithium, stay in solution, and they just get accumulate more and more and more. Um, in terms of being attractive, um, you know, it's it's uh, lithium brine, which is um, is still more uh, economically uh, viable than lithium in hard rock. Um, it's, it's in a very prospective area. It's only 100 kilometers from the Salar to Atacama, which has uh, SQM and Albemarle. Um, the, the deal is very favorable. Uh, the, the, the terms of the, the option agreement are very favorable. Um, and the lithium and cesium concentrations that we've seen so far, whether they've been in brines or in, in sediments, 
are, um, are extremely good. So in, in sediments for lithium, we've seen up to almost 1500 ppm. Um, and in brines, we've seen up to about 1250 milligrams per liter. At Jemmy, um, to just give a quick overview, it's along a 3000 kilometer belt um, called the North American Alkaline Igneous Province. So that goes from Mexico to Alaska, it stretches that far. Um, and there are certain times where the rocks within this belt, uh, they evolve more. And you can almost think about it like the foam on top of your beer. So it's kind of, you know, sometimes they evolve only a little bit and then sometimes they evolve to this foam. And what we're seeing is that foam at the top where it's all these minerals, all these elements that really don't fit in very well anywhere else and they have nowhere to go. So they form these, these, uh, these strange minerals with strange names and with, uh, with chemical formulas as long, in my, as, long as my arm. Um, the four key ones that we see at Jemmy are uh, neodymium, praseodymium, these are the, the two uh, light rare earths, and then of course the heavy rare earths is dysprosium and terbium. Uh, in terms of, of being of attractiveness, it's, uh, it's road accessible, um, its proximity to Texas is a huge uh, positive. Texas is actually becoming a hub for rare earth refinement and manufacturing. So to just give you some examples, we have Mount Weld um, with uh, Blue Line in, uh, in Hondo, Texas, which is basically San Antonio. We have a deal between MP Materials and GM in Fort Worth, and of course, Tesla in, in, uh, in Austin. There's also other pluses that I, I'll just um, very quickly mention, like stable mining jurisdiction, skilled workforce, um, and just the lack of heavy rare earth projects in North America. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be an exciting year for you guys. And to build on that, you know, when do you anticipate drilling will start at both properties? Because as we know, drilling is where things get exciting. Absolutely. So at Jemmy, um, what I'll maybe start with is just talk a little bit about the um, the exploration that we're we've actually we've done and we're planning to do. So for that project, we've reduced reduced the search space from the entire claims, so about 30, 3,500 hectares, 3,600 hectares, down to eight square kilometers. And I'm sorry about the uh, the unit conversion there, but we've we've reduced it significantly. Um, and we're planning a field project now. Uh, field program to reduce that search space further from eight square kilometers down to about the size of a drill pad. And the reason we want to do this is because drilling is very expensive. So we want to make sure that we're spending uh, our money the best way possible and without uh, blindly putting drill holes in where we're not as sure as possible that they're in the right place. Uh, in terms of Laguna Blanca and the lithium project, weather is really a key aspect. Um, Right now, it might be sunny and warm in Vancouver, but uh, it's it's pretty chilly in, in, in Chile, or at least in that part of Chile. Um, it's in the middle of winter. Uh, it's something called Bolivian winter, and you get these systems that, that blow over the, um, the high Andes, and they, they contain moisture and drop drop that moisture out as, as snow a lot of times. Um, and so we need to be uh, really aware of that because it can sock you in for, for a couple of weeks if you, if you do get a, a precipitation system or, or system that moves through. So we're, um, we're, we're not as sure about the drilling and the timeline for, for Laguna Blanca, but we're, we're expecting that in Q3, um, into early Q4, when that weather changes and when we start to see better, better weather conditions. Uh, in the meantime, uh, there is a lot of work that we can do on the ground uh, just for, for short periods. If we can see that the weather will be favorable for a few days, um, we will be getting out to, to do more, more surface sampling and more, um, more geophysics and more as much as we can. Yeah, I'm excited to cover those results, you know, as they come. Uh, so, you know, the lithium market has been on an absolute tear. What's your outlook for the market moving forward? both lithium and rare earths. Right, okay, well, you know, for lithium, there has been some rumblings in the last couple of days that the uh, lithium bull run is over. I, I don't really believe that. I'm not, not so sure that that's, that's the case. 
Um, the fundamentals, in my opinion, are still there. That you know, investment is still exceed in in uh, EVs by the automotive industry is still expected to exceed five hundred billion dollars by twenty thirty. Um, so, I don't think that's going to change, and I don't think that transformation is going to change anytime soon. Um, and I also also don't think that. Um, uh, that there will be such a reduction in the need or in in, in uh, EV um, R and D and new vehicles coming online that'll really slow down the need for these these raw materials. Um, in terms of lithium, I think that the prices will continue to be high until new supply comes online, um, and that could be that could be four or five years. I've read things that say that you know for the next 10 years and beyond will be in a in a deficit situation where um, uh, there's just not enough supply but that that just remains to be seen how fast um, that new supply can come on in terms of rare earths it's a little bit more complex so china has always been a big big player in in the rare earth industry um, and mining there's more environmental constraints now in China. They, they don't want to, uh, to pollute their, their country. So there's more, more constraints on what they can mine and how they can mine it. Um, they are looking at mining in Myanmar and they are doing some of that across the border. But Myanmar has, is in the middle of some, uh, some pretty tricky political situations right now. Um, and uh, it's got China worried and, you know, the rest of the world because they're, it's part of the reason why there is such a, a deficit right now in, in rare earths. Um, and and to, to add to that is the, um, the kind of the tit for tat trade issues between the West mm -hmm. and China. And so, you know, the West is not really keen on um, rare earths that come from China because of uh, uh, a host of reasons I could spend hours talking about it, but you know, having a rare earth source in in North America, um, I think is really key. But that also uh, has a lot to do with um, with how the what the market is like and how the market will stay strong. I think um, for for those rare earths. Yeah, hopefully a strong market for the foreseeable future. I mean, the fundamentals are definitely there. So the company recently closed a financing for gross proceeds of $5 million Canadian. Can you outline the intended use of those proceeds from the financing and company objectives for the next, let's say, six months? Sure, yeah. So it's really pretty simple. It's to move these projects along as fast as possible and to, to drill test them. Um, that's always been our goal. That's what we that's what we tell everyone we talk to is that we want to move these along as fast as possible. Um, however, I will put a qualifier in there that you know we are really uh, aware of, uh, of of ESG and doing things the right way. So yes, it's we 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 want to be very aggressive, but we want to make sure that local stakeholders, um, local communities, local groups. Are all on side. They all understand, and uh, and we have buy-in from them, um, and that also we can show that our projects have um, uh, have benefits, or we can provide benefits to them as a as a community. Whether that's in the form of uh, creating jobs, um, trickle-down effect where we're we're buying goods from from these communities, and so on. So it's uh, like I said, it's to move things as fast as possible. But also making sure that we are um, uh, we're a, a good um, uh, corporation in in the eyes of, of these uh, these local groups. Yeah, I think that's very important, and um, I'm excited to cover and see how you know you guys do with everything. So, if you were to summarize the opportunity with Monumental Minerals down to a simple sentence or two, what would you say? Well, I would say that we are an energetic and driven group, uh, and we have uh, great projects in favorable jurisdictions, um, both Chile and Mexico. Uh, we see present and growing demand for the rare earth mineral industry uh, and for the, the lithium, um, and, and for lithium batteries and for the lithium uh, industry. And I think that we see that um, these raw materials are really needed for the energy transformation 
and that transition away from the combust, uh, internal combustion engine. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Jamil. We look forward to following this story as things develop, and we'll definitely have you back on soon for more updates. All right. Thanks a lot, Aaron. If you like these videos, kindly hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications. Drop us a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. And finally, always remember, Departures Capital is for information, education, and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy or sell a stock because you heard it on here. Buy or sell a stock because you've done your research, you've done your thorough due diligence, and you're making your own personal investment decisions for yourself. This video is not financial advice. Furthermore, this video may or may not have been sponsored by the companies that we've profiled within this video, and we may or may not own shares of any of the profiled companies in this video. If you want to know the full disclosure details, check the description down below along with thoroughly reading our disclaimer. Thanks so much for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Thank you.